Good morning, my beautiful Teletubby Diamonds. Sheila True Love here with you. Yesterday was my birthday. I had an amazing time. I went to one of the most fabulous steakhouses, a place that I really enjoy, Delmonico's, because they make a lot of uh, uh, Italian steaks. And it was amazing. My friends and family, uh, one of my family members anyway, my, one of my nieces was up here. And uh, we had such an amazing time. Anyway, on a more serious note, oh, and thank you for all the shout outs and the gifts for my birthday. I had more cash apps. <laughs> I was like, thank you. I love you all so very much. And yes, you are greatly, greatly appreciated. Thank you. Now on a, a more serious note, like I uh, previously said, we're going to check out something here on Kendra G. And this is with one of our um, beautiful sisters, because, you know, I'm, I'm all about the sisterhood. And uh, she's I, I think she's a little misguided and she needs to be um, redirected. And what we're not going to do is we're not going to sit up on our high horses and be judgmental. You know, this is what I'm talking about when it comes to the sisterhood. She needs support. The last thing I think this is just my view that she should be out here doing is pecking around like a chicken. I call, you know, in life there's pigeons and then there's chickens and then there's eagles. To me, a pigeon is someone who thinks that marriage is a flex or an accomplishment and they think without a man, they can't, life is not worth living. That's a, a, a pigeon. A uh, chicken to me is someone who's still pecking around out here looking for a man, even though they know what comes along with it. They know what comes and they're still pecking around looking for drama, looking for chaos, looking for abuse. And now the eagle, happily single and want to stay that way, love their independence, refuse to ever let anyone put a ball and chain on them again. Those are beautiful eagles. They fly high, they fly freely, and they love life. But anyway, let me share this with you. And afterwards, this is for not only conversational purposes, but also for educational purposes. Okay, here we are. Oh, no. So is that better? That's good. That's good. Okay, I'll look at me. What's the name? Hi, my name is Avia. Avia? Yes. Avia, where are you calling me from? I'm calling you from Houston, Texas. Houston, Texas. How old are you? I'm 36. 36? What you do for a living? I'm a claims adjuster for an insurance company. Claims adjuster. Okay. Do you have any kids? I have two boys two boys how old are your boys uh seven and four weeks seven and four weeks four weeks four weeks <laughs> <laughs> no i can't <laughs> hell you look at your vagina ain't even healed close i was looking for a new and your vagina ain't even healed yet i'm not looking for penis i'm looking for a husband <laughs> That was my plan, but that wasn't his plan. So, but what did you realize? Are. It wasn't his plan. I'm sorry, say that again. When did you realize it wasn't his plan? Uh, um, after he broke up with me. When did he break Before the baby was born. You? October. When? when the baby was born? Before the baby was born. He broke up with you while you were pregnant? While I was pregnant, yes. What the hell was the reason? Here's why we fired our old housekeeper. You didn't have an ask? Your guess is just as good as mine. I didn't ask. Uh, just the excuse was enough for me. What so. was the excuse? Uh, he said that I didn't meet his standards. Um, he didn't see himself with me for a long period of time, and he didn't want to be married. How long were you guys dating for? So we've been off and on since 2019. So let's get so, to the nitty gritty. Were y'all in a off and on means were y'all never in a real relationship? We were in a relationship, yes. This so, let me just say this past, I wanna say uh in March of last year, that's when it was like official. We were we were like, you know, this is gonna happen, we're gonna be committed, this is gonna be marriage. But then after we moved in together, it was just like Now let uh, me ask you this. In March, is that when you learned you were pregnant? 
So yeah. basically, so here's, here's, okay, I want to get to the odd story. Mm -hmm. So basically, y'all were off, off and on. So before you got pregnant, you were not in a committed relationship. We were. We decided that we wanted to be in a committed relationship. Before in March. you got pregnant? Well, I was already pregnant, but I didn't know that I was pregnant. So how long? Okay. Okay, because I gotta get I, I wanna get to the, the foundation. Okay. What I'm trying to get okay. to is the foundation. So you guys were off and on for how long? Since 2019. So four years in 2023. So what part when did y'all become an exclusive? He's my man. I, I, I'm his girl relationship. Just the two of y'all. So oh, I want to say that was in February, that's, February of last year. February okay, of that's last when y'all both agreed to be in an exclusive relationship. Yes. Yes. When did you get pregnant after that? I think I was pregnant in February, like February, March. I found out in April, I want to say that I was pregnant. Okay. And then y'all moved in, did y'all move in together because you were pregnant? No, oh, we didn't know. We moved in together in March. Moved you, in together okay. around, around March. And then I found out in April that I was okay. pregnant. Okay, so now you're living together, you're pregnant. And in October, how many months are you? Uh, so I had the baby December 1st. Okay, so how many months were you in October? October, I was what? 37 weeks so i was like what almost eight months almost so eight, months. eight months pregnant eight months pregnant he came to you and said i don't want to be did he move out no oh shit i mean shoot we were still living together I, we were still living together with a pregnant girl that you're living with while she's eight months pregnant your guess is just good as mine i was <laughs> gonna say this this is he's that was terrible right and i think he could have at least, he could have gave it more of an effort, you know. I don't, but I wanted to get the foundation because these are the risks that you take, yeah. ladies, when you make life decisions without having a lifetime agreement. You know, That's a right. baby is a lifetime agreement with a person, you know, like regardless of how you see it, you guys are connected, whether you're married or not, you have a child together. And so this human being, you guys are co-parenting, but y'all have to get the foundation together before you have a child together because I think it's terrible that he broke up with you at eight months pregnant while you were living with him. But the more I'm getting to the details, y'all foundation wasn't solid. Right. I think it was more so mine. I didn't, we didn't have a clear definition of what commitment was. I was clear about what I wanted, my commitment. I want to be married. I want a husband. That's what I wanted. And from what he said, that's what I thought he wanted to. But come to find out, it wasn't. I think it was just more so he didn't want to see me with anybody else. So it's like, let me just say that I want what you want. So you won't be with anybody else. But, you know. Do you guys co-parent well? Trust me, this is a sale you don't want to make. Um, <laughs> there... I, I would say it'll get better in the future. Right now, not really, no. Did he move out? I moved out. Oh, I don't I like out. this man. You <laughs> moved out with the baby? I moved out, yes. With my baby, I sure did. I sure was did. Was he there when you gave birth? Yeah, he was there. Okay. So, all right. So that's because the reason I was asking all these questions, he had a baby four weeks ago. Now we're going to continue, but you do have to answer this because there's going to be men that are going to feel like, like I said, you know, technically they say you can't have sex until six weeks after you have a baby. So you are not even in the vagina. Your vagina ain't even healed yet. So with that being said, <laughs> what do you say to the man that is concerned that you just had a baby four weeks ago? Concern? I mean, don't be concerned because, I mean, it's not, to me, it's not always is about sex. I mean, you know. Well, honey, I think, I think <laughs> some women gotta get this. You can't understand how having a baby four weeks ago could be to a guy like that could be a big thing. Would you date a guy that had a baby four weeks ago? It depends on the situation. It definitely depends on the situation. Um, I mean, if it was like mine, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> if it was like my situation, absolutely. Why not? Wait, I'm just curious. Why not wait some more time before you start dating somebody else? 
Because I feel like the back and forth and just how it ended, it's it's no resurrecting it. It's definitely no, no, not. I'm not talking about him. I'm just saying for you, why not wait more time to just focus on your newborn child and some other things opposed to dating somebody else? Uh, uh well, this is not my first one, <laughs> and I'm emotionally um, independent, and I would say stable enough to be able to have both. I mean, even before my son or even before I got pregnant, it's always been my desire to be in not necessarily a a committed relationship, but have a husband. I don't really want to be on the dating scene, to be honest with you. I just want a man that wants to be married, that wants to be committed, that wants to be with one person. Like, that's what I want. (laughs) So you have two kids. Are they by different men? Yes. Okay. So now, understandably, you want a you want a husband. How would you go about it different now to get a husband opposed to the two men you had children with? What would you do? Absolutely, different? I definitely wouldn't rush. Um, definitely would take my time. Definitely will have more conversations, uh, ask more questions. Definitely to make sure that we're on the same page, um, and just take it slow. To be honest with you. Okay, so we got Ava, Houston, Texas. Avia. I'm sorry, Avia. <laughs> Avia, Houston, Texas, 36, claim adjuster, mine are two boys. What's your zodiac sign? I'm a cancer. Cancer. And you have a seven-year-old and a four-week. Is it a girl or a boy? Boy, both are boys. Four boys. Seven-week-old oh, seven week old and a four-week-old. Um, and never married, but wants to get married. And your kids are by two different men, correct? Yes, correct. All right, all right. So what kind of man are you looking for now, honey? I want a man that has a relationship with God. I want a man that is able to not only lead, but follow, um, teach, and also be able to learn. Um, I definitely want a man that's family-oriented. Um, definitely one. um I would say active in the church, but as long as he has a relationship, that will do for me. Um, Definitely want one with godly morals and values. Wants a man that wants to be committed, um, that doesn't mind wanting to be, you know, a stepfather. Um, He definitely, it's okay if he has children. Um, It's will be definitely okay if he has, you know, a good relationship, not necessarily with his mother, but also, you know, with his child's mother. Because that would tell me a lot about him. Definitely want a man that takes care of his responsibility, whether it be children, whether it be his lifestyle, his health, uh, mental health. Definitely want a man that is open to counseling, um, therapy, um, and that's emotional intelligence. I definitely want a man that I can have intellectual conversations with, one that respects my mind, values, challenges me, um, and just want a good, all-around good man. Okay. (laughs) One who knows, definitely, he has to know who he is. Just, he has to know who he is. He has to know who he is. What are your deal breakers? Um, My deal breakers are atheists. Um cheaters because <laughs> mine definitely has to be loyal and trustworthy uh-huh. um and i think that's all i can think of right now but definitely atheist is a deal breaker okay does he have to look a certain way <laughs> um no. to me oh your audio and... went out uh oh say again i said i think my battery Hello. Um, as long as he has a good personality and you know good hygiene, I mean, he looks. We can look past that. Also, so no. How he looks. Not that I don't care. <laughs> it's not that I don't care. Um, I mean, you know, handsome to me. Handsome to me. Handsome. Come healed. Yes. Healed. What about money? Does he have to make a certain amount of money? Uh, I'm good with me. So, I mean, no. I mean, he can't be broke, but then I'm not looking for him, you know, to make, like, thousands of dollars in their bed, no. Okay. Do you want more kids? 
one more. So you got one more? Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, let's do the Kendra Cam. Oh. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. If you can see me, I went walking today. Let me take these off. This girl, we, for weeks ago, how the hell are you so skinny? You're snap <laughs> back. Is like, what the? You look. Really I'm sorry. Good. I took my headphones off four weeks ago. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank so, you, thank you. Listen, I'm gonna I'm gonna let you respond to this because you know, as a highlight, people are definitely gonna say you should be waiting you know, longer than four weeks to meet somebody new. Do you have a response to those comments? Um, like I said before, um, I'm definitely healed enough to be able to not necessarily juggle it, but uh, I have a solid foundation in being able to balance both. Um, I think it more so depends on the man if this is something that he wants to take on. Um, that will definitely be, that would definitely be his choice. Okay. Fair enough. So was your last relationship the one in October? Yes. Okay. And you don't have to answer, but I'm going to ask, when's the last time you was intimate with someone? Oh, oh, it was probably somewhere in November. And was it your child's father? Yes. Yes, it was. Y'all broke in October and then y'all had sex again in November? We did only because I say it was around November only because we were trying to get my water to break. It was the only reason. But after that, no. <laughs> I know. That was a lot. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. So, okay. And this, and, and y'all literally made this agreement. So he broke up with you, said all these things. I can't see, I don't see a future with you. And then y'all come together in November to have sex to induce you? Yeah, we, we were still in the same household, so yeah. So when did he, when did, when did y'all move out? When did you move I, out? I moved out, this was like a week and a half after my son was born. So you moved out three, three weeks mm -hmm. ago? Mm-hmm. So you just left the house? Yeah. Did he? Did, did he give you any protests? No, he wasn't there. He was out of town. He works out of town. So I did it while he was gone. So y'all broke up last October. Y'all had sex one last time in November. You had your son in December. And you just moved out three weeks ago. Yep. Girl. <laughs> Girl. <laughs> I say this with all the love I can muster in my soul. Take some time and be a mom. Thank you. You got to get some stuff together. You just moved into a new place. I, I mean, listen, you can do what you want to do, but I truly believe in single seasons. Single seasons are moments in my life when I chose not to date because I had to get my shit together for whatever reason, right? And everybody's shit together is a different thing. I'm not saying you don't have your shit together, but you are a new mom. You just broke up. You just left the baby daddy three weeks ago. You know, you have a four week old child. You, you, you still have to deal with this man in some manner. It's all so new. I, I really think if you just gave yourself some months to adjust in this way, you can attract the type of quality man that you desire. But at the end of the day, it's your life, you know, and, and y'all make your own decisions. But I just think you went through so much in the last three months to attract a new whole guy within your life. You don't think so? I mean, I do, but like I said before, you know, this is this is definitely not the first time. And I guess, you know, I definitely respect and receive what you are saying. And you know, in a sense, you are right. But I think. <sighs> I just think Let me more. Say, this is on my spirit. This is on my spirit. You have people have to learn how to function single, and I say that because when you don't know how to function single, a lot of times you tolerate anything to say in a relationship. When you learn how to be happy single, and I'm not talking about flash and money, all those things. Your 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 treatment has a standard because you treat yourself a certain way, right? Right. So when you learn how to be happy by yourself. When somebody else is coming into your life and spirit and not doing you right, you're automatically going to remove yourself because you know 
by myself, I'm happy. Right. So I don't have to stay in this relationship and feel this way. When you don't ever challenge yourself to learn happiness by yourself, this is why so many people, not just women, stay connected to people because not having someone is so lonely and, and the idea of it is so hard. But trust me when I tell you, you have got to learn. You came into this world by yourself. So you've right. got to learn what happiness is without another person so you can require it. It, it, will, it will be a requirement. Like I'm so good by myself that you have to be good to me because I mean, I'm fine, you know? And I just think that, again, it's your life, but I just think there's some time needed in between this. But let me just ask you this. Like, why do you feel right now a guy would be lucky to be with you? I feel that way. And I'm just a uh, caveat to what you just said. I've had that season before of singleness um, in between the time that um, my child's father, this one, uh, when we first started dating in 2019 and also, you know, when we stopped dating in 2019, I had a whole three years of just me by myself being single. And it's like, I may seem, you know, not necessarily desperate, but I know how to be alone and I'm okay with being with me and I'm okay with leaving when I'm not being served anymore. So it's like, I, I've been through that. So in this season or in this time, <clears throat> why are women everywhere? I wouldn't say that it's easy, but it's like, I know how to move on and I know how to, you know, be by myself. So it's more so it's not a need, it's it's a want. <laughs> it's a want that I feel that I'm ready for. And I know it's like, yes, I've been through so, so much in the past, you know, couple of months. And just like throughout my pregnancy, I've been through so much, so much so to where I know that I need a new beginning and not necessarily a new beginning with someone that I desire, but more so just an you know, I need something to compensate from all the stuff, you know, that I went through. Because like you said, it was a lot. It was a lot, a lot, a lot. Uh, but why? If, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, wait, I was going to say, okay, so why do you feel as though, like, what would you say? Why would it, The last question is, why would a guy be lucky to be with you? A guy would be lucky to be with me just because of the simple fact I'm loyal. Um, I'm, I am independent as far as I want to work. I don't mind working. I want to be a helpmate. I want to be a wife. I want to, you know, be with one person. I want to grow with someone, you know, for the rest of my life. So I think that just my value and my mindset would do nothing but build and add, you know, to a man and likewise. And I think that that's rare these days. Okay. And what? What are your three flaws? I forgot to ask you that question. Uh, uh, I would say that I guess I move too fast <laughs> would be one. Um, I guess I'm too trusting. That would be one, but definitely learn my lesson. Um, the third one. Um, I guess I can go out on the limb and say um, trusting in potential and not necessarily um, actions. Uh, not necessarily actions. Okay. I don't want to say your name wrong. I think I got, it's not Avia. It's, um, it is Avia, yes. Oh, is right? yes. Okay. Yes. Avia, do you want the guy to be in Houston, Texas? Um, he doesn't have to be. I don't mind what? traveling and if he doesn't mind traveling. Travel? two small kids when it when it comes to time i have a great i have a perfect support system so when it's time when it's time when i can okay. i will we, we will uh, uh what's the age range you would date you're 36 uh definitely older than me um the cap would be 50 you would go to 50 yeah. and you yes. said that you would have one more child yes i say okay. one more we'll see We'll see. All right. All right, honey. How could this man reach out to you? Uh, my Instagram, it's my name, Avia Avia. Um, it's spelled A V E E Y A H and then A V I A R. It's all together. 
So there you have it, my Teletubby beautiful diamonds. You got to give her credit. She's very, very resilient. That's for sure. She's determined. She's amazing. I love her. I think she's beautiful. You know, I, I agree with uh, Kendra. She needs to, uh, you know, learn how to, uh, uh, you know, you, you, you've got to learn how to function being single. Now, she says she went through the single season for three years after her first um, child with some dude who obviously make babies and didn't walk off, whatever. That's disgusting. Uh, these how these dudes are with the, with the ladies, women, you know. And uh, now she got the second circus clown, who was a demon, obviously, who could sit up here and have a, a a lady, you know, produce his seed, and 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 she's the one who's moving out with a, a four week old baby. What, what three weeks the baby was when she left? Okay, uh, <laughs> this is ridiculous. She has a seven year old, and now she has a four week old. And she said she would have another child. Uh, I wouldn't recommend that. Now, instead of women, because I was reading some of the comments and how the women were not being very supportive. I don't support that kind of behavior either in terms of, you know, jumping from man to man. I promote women staying single and supporting each other. And instead of women trying to tear her down and come for her, this is when the sisterhood is necessary. You see, now, if I lived anywhere near her, I would definitely have to have a talk with her. Uh, whatever happened to birth control? You know, what about having your tubes tied? If you have a, a hard time finding out where to get these things done, Planned Parenthood. Planned Parenthood would help you get whatever you need, even abortions, if that's what people are into. Even though they say it's against the law, but Planned Parenthood, know the places where it's not. Planned Parenthood can take you to where you can get your tubes tied. I didn't say get them cut, just get them tied. And if you meet somebody who has money down the road, you can get them untied. Because a lot of women can't take birth control pills. Uh, they can't take the birth control, you know. Um, I remember I was on birth control and my son is here. You know? <laughs> so that's not 100%. You know, I, I saw that I was a breeder. I gave birth to my daughter and uh, I said, okay, I want to spit. I, I, I just don't think so. No more kids. I was on birth control and I still have a son. And I'm glad that he came through because he's proven to be nothing but a, a blessing. Um, but there's different options, you know, and a lot of people can't, women can't take birth control because it blows them up. It causes you to have weight gain. It causes all type of mood swings, severe mood swings. You see, men are not taking all of that kind of stuff into consideration. When a man, all he has to do is go into a clinic, get a quick slip vasectomy, which vasectomies can also be reversed. Okay? Why should women have to keep doing all of these things to their bodies? So going forward, ladies, honey, look, if he ain't got no papers showing that he got a vasectomy, the hell with all that. And, and the thing is also sleeping around without condoms. Not a good idea, ladies. I know things happen and sometimes you slip up, you're drinking or smoking and you're not thinking. I don't think you should be drinking or smoking with men. <laughs> Listen to a girl who speaks from experience. Trust and believe. Anyway, uh, this is where the sisterhood has to come in. And if she had, uh, you know, women uh, helping each other in her community, Women where we could sit and talk. We're going out for coffee. I have children. You have children. I'm single. You're single. How about this weekend? I'll take your children. So you have Friday, Saturday. I'll bring your kids back to you on Sunday. And then we could alternate. At least let's do that once a month. Go throughout your community. You see other women who are just as single as you are. Why not reach out, exchange phone numbers? That way, when I make it home safely, I could text you and let you know I'm, I'm home. And you text me and let me know what's up. So we're taking care of each other. You feel like you're in the middle of a nervous breakdown. You got your women that you could call on. And all you have to do is step up to... See, I'm very gregarious. I have an outgoing personality anyway. And, and I don't have this shyness or fear of people because I just don't give a damn. That's my, my thing, you know. I'll step up to a person in like where I live. I'm single. I have two other women here who are single and we have each other's phone numbers and we check in. Like I had, I, w I was like home for three days. I, my, my phone was blowing up. I haven't seen you. Are you okay? What's going on? You see? And it's just a matter of single women 
reaching out to other single women and being a support network to each other. You know, it used to frustrate me so badly when, when I used to see women who would put up with so much, you know, and, 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 and if she says she's a cancer and cancer women, they put up with stuff that no human should put up with. Not just what anyone, no human should put up with the crap that I see a lot of cancer women who are so loving, nurturing, and patient, and they should not be putting up with crap, you know? But uh, I went, I'm in therapy now. You know, I mean, I have my therapist, like a psychiatrist needs a psychiatrist, you know? So once a month, I tune in with my uh, psychiatrist because I don't deal with social workers and counselors and, and, and well, no, I need somebody who has a PhD behind their name. So when, you know, my therapist made it very clear to me because I was kind of impatient when I look at all the crap that women are putting up with, you know, but my uh, therapist said, Sheila, what you have to understand is that you seem to be very well adjusted. You're in touch with yourself. You seem to be very con uh, um, um, confident. And you, I, from what I hear, this is what my therapist, and I've had men and women therapists, psychiatrists, psychologists as well. And they said, it's obvious that you really do love yourself. And I do. I have a deep understand. I accept everything about myself. I accept my strengths, my weaknesses, my values, my beliefs, and my emotions. I'm very, very comfortable with my authentic self. But what I'm so, what I need to learn to be patient, and I need to realize that not everyone is like me. Not everyone is, 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 is unbroken. I was broken too. But I put in the work. I went to, I first prayer, absolutely prayer. That's, that's it. And then I put myself into therapy and I put myself into support groups and I put in the work. Not everyone, however, is in touch with who they really are and they don't truly love themselves. Now, because people, sometimes I make people feel a little intimidated because they want to love themselves and they want to be in touch with themselves. And when they see the, that's the way I am, sometimes it could stir up some intimidation or even some jealousy. You know, but I don't have time for nonsense. I, I just don't because I'm not a people pleaser anymore. I'm a God and a Christ pleaser. And that's all I care about. Normally, I try to deal with people who are on my level. OK, but I also have to remember to stay humble because everyone is not there yet. Not saying that they won't get there, but they're not there yet. And it's obvious this beautiful lady and I love her so much. And I'm definitely going to Jehovah God through Jesus Christ, in prayer. And that's what we're supposed to do for each other, especially with our sisterhood. I love the fact that she says the person must be have a relationship with God. If you are an atheist, don't even think about calling her. But what she has to also uh, insist upon, don't just say you're a Christian. Don't say it. Speak about it. Be about it. Are you active in the church? Are you willing to have family Bible studies? Are you going to prepare our children with their spiritual suit of armor so when they go out into this very demonic world, they will be prepared when someone's coming after them with crack, crystal meth, hair on, smoking dope, wanting you to be a sleazy, you know, they don't have decent morals. Is he going to teach the children that they're not supposed to be no part of the world? You know? It's important for us to raise our children to be Christians, you know, to protect, to have protection. When I say no part of the world, like the Bible says, as a Christian, we're not supposed to be no part of the world anyway. And that means that we shouldn't conform to the sinful and corrupt values and the beliefs of this world. We are supposed to teach our children to live according to God's will. And according to God's standards, make sure that whatever you decide to do, we have to equip them to know to say when to walk away and say, nah, nah I'm, I'm, not, I'm not comfortable doing that, baby. Uh, no, that's not for me. You do you. And I'm a damn sure do me. You have a good day. Teach them how to walk away. Why? I'm not comfortable with that. That don't sit right with me, but I'll call you later. You know what I'm saying? Bad association is everywhere. 
Not to say that they're not going to slip and fall and make mistakes. Of course they will. They're imperfect people. But, you know, I think that it's very important for women. That's number one. What is your deal breaker? Well, she said her deal breaker is if he's an atheist. But what if he's an agnostic? What if he say he's a Christian, but he doesn't take the spiritual lead? He doesn't provide. You see, instead of women constantly thinking about provide material monetarily, that's the most important thing. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. No, no, no. The most important thing first is provide spiritually. Because if he's providing spiritually, everything else will fall into place. So if he's not willing to take the lead and provide spiritually and raise our children so that they will be prepared to make a stand, then that's a deal breaker. He can't even get to the second step. You can't even get past the first one. So anyway, like I said, let's all pray for this beautiful lady. A man is not the be all to end all. Like I said, you know, pigeons to me are people who think marriage is an accomplishment. It's a flat. It's a flat. Now, a, a chicken still pecking around looking for a man, even though, as you've heard, you've heard right here with me with your own two ears. She got baby number one. He done stepped off. Baby number two. He done stepped off. These men are the way they are. I, and I'm going to say, ladies, we got to take responsibility. Let's own it. Because we have the power to shut all that down. We don't put up with bad behavior. You cheat on me, you're done. You, don't cut, you can't come back from that. You don't roll the dice twice on that one. Stabbing me in my back, cutting my throat with betrayal, no. Nah. And we have to put our foot down. You think you're going to disrespect me? No, that's not tolerated either. But you have women who are putting up with things that they should not put up with. That's the problem. You have to have your standards. Standard number one is you got to be on Jehovah and Jesus team. And I'm not talking about verbally. I need to see some action backing that. What are you doing for the church? Are you actively involved or what's going on? Talk to me about your ministry. Tell me about the man's Bible study group that you're getting ready to start. Yeah, I want to see some action, man. Because, uh, no. So like I said, anytime women decide to shut all this foolishness down, we can. Don't think uh, that you can't be happy uh, being single. That's society trying to drill that into our heads, this male patriarchy. Oh no, you can't be happy. You can't enjoy holidays. You can't enjoy birthdays. You can't enjoy nothing unless you have a man. Are you kidding me? My life has never been better. I am so happy. I feel so much joy. I have so much peace, no ball and chain, nobody telling me what I can and can't do, where you at, what time you coming home, oh child, are you, what, can't do, no, I make a better roommate than a wife anyway, I don't want to be a wife ever again, 2.5 times was more than enough for me, no thank you, it's too much work, and these women that call themselves say that they have a husband, honey, you ain't got no husband. If you doing the financial heavy lifting and you doing most of the work around the house, that's not a husband. That's a pimp. He's pimping you. What is a pimp? A man who got women working to take care of him. That's a pimp. Okay. And it's not a, a, a going fairly both ways. She's sitting up here working half of paying the half of the bills. I'm saying, you know what I'm saying? And I'm doing most of the housework, the cooking, the cleaning, the taking. Why are women doing all this work? Why are you doing this? If he doesn't want to do 50-50 with the housework, the cooking, the child rearing, you should not be living in the same house. Let him stay in that house by himself. Now you don't have 50-50. You're doing it 100-100. How about that, buddy boy? And when it comes to the kids, he got the kids for one week. You take the kids for one week. Oh, you know how your situation is based on your situation. Because a lot of things are situational. But like I said, ladies, you can be happy single. And remember Isaiah chapter 54, verse 5. Jesus Christ said, I am your true husband. Why settle for less when you can have the very, very best? A man is not your savior. Jesus Christ is. I love you. Twinkle, twinkle, twinkle.